Okay, so uh, if you're watching this video, I'm going to go through a detailed description on how to clean your Shark Multi-Flex Battery Powered uh, Vacuum Cleaner. This is actually one of my favorite vacuum cleaners. Um, for those of you that uh, are new to the channel, I, this is more of a mechanic type channel for motorcycles and four-wheelers and stuff. However, as a lot of people don't know that I'm a master of the custodial arts. I've been a janitor for 13 years. I've worked for Stanley Steamer for three years. I've got certifications in whole house cleaning and uh, viral cleanup. Thank God the state of Illinois didn't hire me because they really could use me now. But uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this and clean this vacuum up. And this is actually, this isn't the best vacuum out on the market, but it is my favorite. So uh, the, the multi-flexibility when you're in a commercial office really is the, the, the main thing that I really like about this vacuum. But I use this vacuum constantly, almost every day. And I've gotten to the point where I, where I lost the battery and I'm down to one battery. So uh, this thing, the suction isn't doing real good. The roller's starting to slow down. So on, on the underneath, you'll see why the roller's starting to slow down. So we'll just go ahead and I'll, we'll do a real good thorough cleaning of this. And I'll put it back together. And if you watch the video till the end, um, I also have filmed some video footages of airs that come up on this vacuum when you use it and all of a sudden the lights start flashing. Maybe the lights go from green to red. Um, so at the end of the video, I'll go ahead and do a voiceover on the video footage that I've shot. I actually really want to get into these vacuum cleaner videos because uh, the other people that I'm seeing on YouTube are kind of, well, I don't know how to say this. They're kind of wussies, but yet they're real pretty attractive people that are on YouTube with high-end cameras. And they're, they, you know, I just don't feel like they're they're uh, giving you uh, the experience or the answers from someone that actually uses these vacuum cleaners every day. So we get into cleaning this, and then after we do the clean and get this thing put back together, we're going to go into troubleshooting, and then uh, yeah, go back to work Monday. Okay, first things first, remove the battery. And we're going to break this puppy down into the three parts. You got your head, you got your shaft, and then you got your other cleaning head. Ugh. And we'll start with the cleaning head here. Okay, so now that the uh, vacuum cleaner is broken into threes here, I'm going to show you why the if, if the head of your unit is slowing down, and you can visually actually see it slow down, It'll actually, not only will the roller on the inside start to slow down, but it'll actually drain your battery faster. Take a look at this, and this is a lot of people, oh my God, well you got to remember I use this in a commercial type building. Look at the hair. A lot of people are probably grossed out by that. This is human hair from buildings um, that is intertwined inside this roller. Um, and then in the front you also have... Uh, I was taking this over to my mom's house, and this is this white is from little Maxi Max. He's my one-eyed bandit, my little buddy. He's my buddy, uh, my mom's dog. So it's got a lot of dog hair in it. And then the roller, as you can see here, there actually is. Well, we'll find out if it's still intact. But there's a thin, like bristle type deal set up on the bottom of this, and look at how caked it is. For the most part, there here, you have an entrance through here, see if I can get this light set up. And the entrance is really clean and you're not going to be able to see it. So a lot of times if you get into water or mess, you get build up in there. So I'll show you how to get all this cleaned up. What we're going to do on the beginning of this is just, you're just going to pop your two tabs there and this is going to release this. We'll get this, we'll soak this in the sink. And look at the, <laughs> look at that, look at what's <laughs> built up there. Um, we're just, basically, can you just imagine what that's doing um, to the roller speed when it goes into the, the mode to clean it? Look at that. <laughs> Get that cleaned up. Might actually take a screwdriver. Um, it actually is going to be easier to just remove the, the roller. So you're just going to pull on the roller on the plastic side and pull it out. We're also going to soak this 
and then when we reassemble the vacuum we'll let everything dry for 24 hours before we put it all back together and we're gonna just basically oh, look at this this is the vacuum doing its job this was only after one week of use and you see all this that got caught up in there now you gotta remember I'm using this as commercial that's the bristles there so we're gonna come through and clean that with a toothbrush throw this nastiness away and then there's a couple ways of doing this to get this hair out um, I'm not real sure I think I just want to show, show me cutting it out Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this hair. This hair is so built up that we're going to have to cut it. And a lot of people, this is actually, you can see these, this red. This is carpet fibers that are ripped up out of the carpet. So um, I'll try to remove this by hand first. And I really don't want to get into the hair too much because it's really tangled in there. But we're not going to be using scissors like all the other videos we're going to use a razor knife you know this isn't arts and crafts center for preschool where we're cutting out snowflakes and stuff like that this is this is an extremely dirty vacuum see there goes a rubber band so you put an aisle with that um, we're going to use a razor knife to cut that hair okay and what we're going to do is uh, what you learn in the scouts is you never cut towards yourself. You always cut away from yourself. So we're going to cut this hair up, off, and you don't want to press because this is a razor knife. You don't want to press into this because the roller is plastic. We're just going to cut it just a little bit. And it'll cut right through that hair. I'll put an Amazon link to a razor knife. all off at one shot here. I mean you can see how thick this is. This is why this vacuum isn't isn't running to speed like it used to after a week. sink split here in a second kind of wanted a uh, old farm style but I run out of money in my budget um, to put that style of sink in so I kept the split sink but I went with a 60-40 instead of a 50-50 split Done, we're just kind of gonna get the little stuff off the bristles. Just pull as hard as you can on these bristles. Well, that's just what I want other people's hair flying down my sink. I also put a new furnace and AC unit in this house, and it's just remarkable the difference that it makes. Why I'm trying to get all this off first is because we're going to eventually here get to get this wet. Um, as you can see in these little feet too, these little rollers, you know, you've got debris in there too. That's basically, uh, that's from running over floors that I've mopped and then that drags water in and then catches and creates a build up there. I don't know if we can remove these little let them wheels come out. I don't think so. You gotta pull the whole top end off here. I just more vacuum videos to come. I just I get on YouTube and 
I see other people on there, not to knock on them, but, you know, I mean, they're not using these vacuums in a commercial setting, and they're, the other vacuums were nowhere near as dirty as this, so I'm going to continue on these pullers, because I don't want to make this video too long. Okay, and next what we're going to do, since we've got this all pretty much cleaned up, is we're going to use a foaming glass cleaner. I'm an AMS oil dealer. It's some of the best glass cleaner I've ever used. Uh, and we're going to, details in the description below, uh, we're going to basically spray this down. We don't want to soak this in water because of the internals on it, but we're just going to get it wet, and the foam is actually going to penetrate it. And because it's glass cleaner, it's not going to harm the plastic or anything. So we're just going to spray it down top to bottom and let it set for a couple minutes and then come back with the toothbrush. Okay, and now that we have let our glass cleaner set, we are going to get the old toothbrush out and we're going to basically just scrub everything down. It's like you're washing a car. Um, we're just basically going to penetrate all this stuff with the toothbrush. I we'll want to get in there to the roller as well. Like I said, when we go to reassemble this, we're going to, going to wait 24 hours to reuse this vacuum with getting this wet. This was an extremely dirty vacuum this time. I'm getting into the cleaning port on the back side. This is where the vacuum sucks into the vacuum. You get a little bit in there with the toothbrush. Flip it over. Now we're going to go on this side. Now, after we've got both sides clean, we're going to wipe it down. And anything that you don't wipe up, um, it'll dry out. It's not that big of a deal. Hey, hey, look at that. It's looking pretty good. Now we'll wipe the top side. And 
this is by far my favorite vacuum just because of the new the flex capability they actually on the newer one I've got a newer one that I use as well that runs for 40 minutes with on a single battery and the battery isn't replaceable and I, I really like it too but the problem is it doesn't uh, flex so when you go underneath of furniture and chairs well if you're going to use this at your house um, ideally that really helps out at your house so yeah look at the difference on this okay so we're going to move on to the parts that we're going to soak and clean in the sink before we clean this we're going to go ahead and pre-spray this as well on the top cover just give it a little scrubby scrub Throw your roller in there and our top cleaner. Let the sink fill up. Now, with our sink somewhat clear, we're just going to agitate the front roller in the sink and just get it wiped down. It's very important that you that you let this piece dry all the way before you install it back into the into the vacuum. But we're going to squeeze it after we get it wet to get all the water out of it. Then we're going to set it aside in the other side of the sink. Same thing with this piece here. We're going to go back to our toothbrush gonna scrub this down here. And we're just gonna spray this off. Set it aside as well and let it dry out. Oh my God, the lights are the lights are so bright. Now to the main part of uh, the tool here, and this would be just your general maintenance on your filter and your inside of your canister for this. This one's really dirty, so you'll see it dirtier than the average person has it. But there's not much to do with you know cleaning this besides your normal everyday stuff. And then at the end of the video, like I said, make sure you stay tuned until then. And I'll show you what this thing does when it gets all clogged up and everything, the air codes it throws. Here is a lot of you, if you're watching this, you probably already know that this is your main filter underneath of this port here. So we're going to pull it out. Boom, our filter comes out. This is extremely dirty here. Uh, again, we're going to use that foaming glass cleaner in here, but we're going to try to avoid spraying in here on the left side. Um, I may even put some tape on that real quick, but... This is just real simple. Most of you probably already know we're just going to throw this in the sink. And we will clean this and let this set for 24 hours. Um, I actually left dirt in here. So to empty the canister, you just have your normal button here. And I'm going to empty that out. Then as you can see, you'll get debris stuck in the screen and hair, of course. It's paperwork, shredded paperwork. A lot of hair. Oh, is that from a band-aid? Ugh, come on. 
Okay. Okay, so we're going to actually clean the canister part here. And actually what a lot of people you can do is just get your towel wet and kind of go in there and wipe. Um, but as always, I'm going to recommend me doing it differently. So we're just going to spray the inside of this with glass cleaner. And let it soak. And then we're going to come back and wipe it out. I don't know if you can see this where it's actually foaming. See, that's where it's going to, when it's foaming, it's actually going to break into the debris and loosen the debris up. If you want to get crazy with it, you can always use this brush, the, the old toothbrush that we used before, if you want to get it clean, clean, and go in there and just gently scrub the metal screen inside the unit. Then we'll go around. Make sure I only want to do this once. I don't want to do this twice. Oh no, you're making a mess. Oh yeah, well, clean it up. Before you do my cleaning method, I would just highly suggest that you're out of vacuum cleaner warranty. <laughs> okay, now that we've agitated everything, we're going to go in with our towel and we're going to clean the excess dirt from inside the vacuum. You can actually hear it hitting the floor. Then we will go in with the smaller towel. This was a dirty, dirty, dirty vacuum. This is a bad vacuum cleaner. Very bad. Looks like we got a little bit in the corner that we can't get to. Again, I can't reiterate, you're going to let this dry before you use it. Okay, now we're going to get to this part. Now, as usual, you could actually go in and uh, you just use a towel and some water here, but we're just going to kind of plug the hole. I'm going to spray it down. wipe it. You could just use a wet towel if you'd like, but I prefer the glass cleaner method. You want to get crazy, you can use a toothbrush. I'm not going to. So, bam. Get this puppy all cleaned up, ready to go. And if it bothers you that we have any uh, excess dirt in there, we're just going to respray, just real lightly, just to get some liquid in there. 
and we're going to take paper towels and especially in the corners here we're going to put our paper towel in there we're going to take a table knife we're going to use the back end of the knife and we're just going to scrub the, the grooves of the container on the back side there and it will get all the excess inside the corners see the dirt on the excess of the corners Then we're going to just lightly go around the inside of the vacuum area, the other side here. And that will get all the corners clean. Then we're just going to pull our air filter off and we're just going to soak it. You can run the dirt right out of it. Just kind of get it wet, squeeze it, get it wet, squeeze it until no dirt, no dirt comes out of it. Then we're going to set it aside. We've got our internal filter. Same thing with it. Just take your fingers and kind of run it around the edge of it. Clean them out. Real simple. Then we got our lid. The old toothbrush out. We are going to allow it all to dry. And now that everything is good and cleaned up, we're going to uh, reassemble it and put it all back together. First things first is we're going to install our brush roller. And what you'll see here is basically well, it looks like a cross, cross pattern. We're going to put that cross pattern in first into the assembly. And then we're going to basically push the roller in. Real simple. Make sure that it turns both of them. Then we're going to just reinstall our front cover. going to close our container bin up, put our newly cleaned primary filter, this is our primary, this will be your secondary, back in to the unit and put our cover on just like that. Then Guess what? It's like loading the gun. Put our magazine in, our battery. Hey, looky there. Looky, looky. Oh, yeah, look at the field of suction difference. Let's get crazy and go to the full setting here. Maxed out. Oh, my God. And now we're going to reinstall our handy dandy shaft. Oh, look at that. This is what makes this vacuum my favorite vacuum on the market because they actually did away with this on the new Dyson. I've got the new Dyson video coming soon. Um, but it's just, 
this flex piece here just man when you're going underneath your bed like I've got a I've got a bed for that I can put storage underneath of now or any kind of furniture whatsoever that little bit and actually I'll be honest with you this probably did cost quite a bit more to manufacture I mean and when you think about it they had to actually add another rubber hose in here from the manufacturing process and then they had to manufacture this plastic assembly and then instead of just having a straight rod like a Dyson or whatnot. There's actually a lot more thought process involved in this vacuum. Uh, this is why I like the Shark vacuums. They're really tough. They're tough vacuums. I don't even think twice about beating these things up. I really don't. I mean, watch this. I'm going to drop this. And I'm going to pick it up. And the sun bitch runs. Uh, my favorite part of the shark vacuums is they actually use a different plastic. Um, that's very important to me because I'm so hard on stuff. You can just tell by the plastic compared to a Dyson. I'm not really knocking Dyson. Dysons are wonderful vacuums um, if you're using them in your house. If you do a lot of heavy cleaning or you want to use these, another benefit of these was the removable battery. The original cordless Dysons had removable batteries and then they went to internal batteries. but. Um, the removal batteries when they throw you to these batteries only last about 25 minutes you can get some upgraded ones on Amazon but this basically shark is my favorite vacuum company I don't care what these other videos say about oh they got vacuum tests and whatnot I'm using these things um, all day long in our building so then we're just going to put our head on and then make sure that the vacuum head is going to work You can actually see the, the, the internal rollers were spinning so slow from uh, the hair clogs. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching and subscribing and then we're going to go to a little clip here and I'm going to go through some of the errors that I've come across as I've been using this vacuum. So. Uh, thanks for uh, watching. If you like the video, subscribe and like the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care if you thumbs down. Just do something. Okay, and what we actually have here is we're flashing between the carpet setting and the hardwood surface setting. This is how old the footage is. That's my old house. And what it is is it's signifying a clog, an internal clog that's going into the vacuum canister itself from the uh, shaft drive. You'll see me pull some of the debris out of here to get it cleared out. Once you get it cleared out, it'll run. But it's completely clogged. And that's the, uh, what is that, a peanut? I think that, oh, got a Q-tip. I mean, that sucker's clogged. I should turn it on. There we go. Turn it on and it'll clear the clog. And this here, this is just signifying a dead battery. So you want to go ahead and put it on the charger. It won't even turn on is, is basically because it's dead. Now this is this is when the vacuum will actually run, but you will hear the excess noise coming out the bottom of the uh, vacuum cleaner itself, and it won't have any suction going in. And see the screen? The screen is completely plugged, and it may have a plug inside, but it basically it's the screen on the inside of the tank that's plugged, and you're going to get all your vacuum power going out the bottom end of the vacuum. Okay, this is going to signify another plug here, and it'll run for a little bit, and then as it's running, it'll throw this code again. Again, this is an internal clog. Or this is either the screen filter is clogged or the front of the vacuum is just completely clogged. And you need to get in there, probably a paper clip or something in on the internal side. And you've got to get in there and clean all that out. And right there you can see that it's an internal clog paperwork. 
And this just signifies that the battery is overheated when it's hooked back up to the charger. So you just have these blinking lights when you plug it in the charger. It'll charge. It just needs to cool down before it charges.